an absolute monster of a scorpion. She's on the move, she's on the move. I just can't believe how the coloration just... Oh! God, it's so arboreal! Die! I'm Jack Randall. Oh, bam. See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Whoa, Up close and personal. And a massive snake! Okay, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated python in the water. Come on, let's go. I found this building, an abandoned building. Effectively, it's a man-made cave. So what we're creating here is a little microclimate, a little tiny ecosystem. Animals will be coming in here seeking refuge during the day. So what I'm gonna do is just check around very carefully to see what I can find, any animals in different nooks and crannies. The Southeast Asian jungles have been home to humans for thousands of years. From time to time, people move on leaving their footprint, but allowing nature the chance to take back. This is an abandoned house. Don't know what's in here, but this looks perfect for animals. There'll be all sorts of rodents in here, so food, the snakes. And there's all this bush around here. They probably might be seeking refuge in here. There must be something in here. Let's have a look around. What may first look like a pretty desolate environment, Places like this actually act like a wildlife refuge, paving way for a new ecosystem to emerge. Look at that up there. That's basically a cave just being built up there. And to see the telltale signs of animals moving in to make their homes. And where there's animals, predators will be making their hunting grounds. I mean, it's just incredible. The power of plants. It's building its own substrate to be able to grow this vegetation right here. From the looks of it, the building was abandoned only a few years back, giving me an amazing chance to see the start of a process of nature taking back. Time to start the search. Look at these trees all around. This is amazing. Look at all these. This vegetation is already getting quite high, so that's how some animals might be able to get into the upper floors. Whoa, look at that. There's a tree growing out of the, whole, of the floor there. I reckon maybe that's taken a couple of years to grow. So that kind of is telling me exactly how old it's been since this has been vacated. Ah oh, man, look at this. Perfect stuff for animals to hide in. Oh yeah, look at this. I really want to find one of these alive. I haven't found one yet. Scorpion, look at that pincer. That's an absolute monster of a scorpion. Wow. Not very venomous because it's got very big pincers. So a bit the larger the pincers on a scorpion, generally it means not as venomous because that's its primary mechanism for defense. There you are, little spider. Little golden orb weaver. Beauty. Right, I'm just gonna look along this vegetation here because we've got these birds going in and out. Perfect habitat for ambush predators. I know what I'm looking for. Snake, snake, look at that. Wow, pit viper. I can't believe that, that is amazing. Pit vipers, they can sense warm-blooded prey. That's a perfect position to be able to snatch a bird. Completely still, you can see how well camouflaged it is in all this undergrowth bush here. Siamese Peninsula Pit Viper. Everywhere I go, I stumble upon one. I feel like they're around every single corner, but I know it's that particular species, that red tinge at the end of its tail, that tells me exactly what species that is. Okay, I'm just gonna get him down so we can have a quick, quick look at this viper. Ooh. Like very, very clingy snakes. Many snakes just fall off the hook. But pit vipers, they easily stay on this, this hook like that. Wow. Ah, what a... Whoa. Don't... Ooh, he's coming up my hook. He's coming up my hook. He's scary. Oh, he's bitey. 
That's the first time I've seen a pit viper try and strike. Really don't want to get bitten by a snake like this. I would end up getting necrosis on my finger and it'd have to be amputated. Wouldn't be able to save it in time. Ooh, it's a really scary snake, but absolutely gorgeous. But that's the S position. You can see, coiled up, ready to strike. I'll show you what it looks like to be eyeball to eyeball with a pit viper. Lens is in strike distance there. Definitely in strike distance. Gorgeous. Look at that red tail, tinge. Because she's got those pits, you can see them quite clearly. She knows what's camera and what's my fingers. Well, she's moving ahead now. Oh, opening that mouth. See that? Wow. I just turned it off because I got a bit scared. She's on the move, she's on the move. I'm going to put her back up on the branch because you know what? I think we've had a close enough look up of a tree where she feels comfortable. Pit Viper, let's see what else we can find. All right, let's go upstairs. Snake! Whoa! Red tail racer. Got him! Jeez! God, they're so arboreal! Whoa! Jai! Ah, he's nailed me! Ah, I told you, a bit bitey! Really bitey! Do not do that again, mate! Please don't! Not my face! They puff out their throat when they're in aggressive mode. And they do that when a predator comes along. That is strike position. Let's look at that blue tongue going in and out. Very, very closely similar in looks to the, to the pit viper. Immediately I thought this was a pit viper, but look at that, the way they puff their throat out. It's more, it's not, unlike a cobra, the way they make themselves look bigger, that's more from uh, uh, upwards and downwards. He just like, flattens his neck from side to side and just looks really, really, they extremely alert snakes as well. They're active during the day, so he would have been out there probably looking for the birds, but hunting the birds during the day, unlike the pit viper. The pit vipers hunt at night in ambush. These actually are a lot more active predators. So he's a quick moving snake. Let's move over here so you can have a quick view of the snake. It kind of has this startling look. We've well, got these kind of blue speckles and the black in between those scales. You wouldn't really want to touch him. Look at that red tail, exactly what I was saying. Curling around himself. Extremely arboreal, just like a pit viper. It's unbelievable how closely in colors it is to the pit viper. But this is a non-venomous snake. Absolutely fine. I can be bitten by a snake like this, especially since I've invaded a space, made it a day, a bit interesting. I just can't believe how the colorations are... Oh! Boy, almost got my face. Jeez, you cannot for a second. Let you go. No, don't. Don't come up my arm. Don't come up my arm. It's scary. It's like, he knows, he knows, that I, I'm pretty sure he knows that I'm not going to eat him right now. But he's like, just go away. Put me down. Put me down, please. We just want to have a quick look at you. Look at your blue tongue. See how colourful you are. And then we let you go about your day. That's what it looks like to face down the red tail racer. Hello. I don't know which one's more intimidating. The pit viper or the red tail racer. I must say, this guy's doing a good job. It's scaring me. Well, there you go. One of the species I had on my list. Didn't expect to find him here. The red tail racer. Yes. Well, I didn't expect that. A showdown with two predators right inside the abandoned house. My next step is to come back here at night. The rainforest is a totally different place once the sun goes down. It sounds different, it looks different, 
different animals come out to live their lives. If I found two snakes in here during the day, who knows what I'll find at night. <laughs>